anyway, you got the first seven minute opening. Go ahead. All right. The structure of the food production industry today is a result of many factors. The plant agriculture and animal agriculture industries have become intertwined as a result of increased efficiency over uh, uh, for greater profits. The, uh, and as a result, the government subsidies uh, dictating production. Uh, today, we're going to explore uh, that while most uh, while the mass food production industry as a whole currently causes environmental harm to, to varying degrees, uh, the animal product industry is the leader in harm done to the environment. Uh, the degree of this harm can be measured by examining the levels of air, water, and land <coughs> pollution emitting uh, by the production of meat and dairy compared to plant foods. Uh, globally, animal foods are the leading polluters of ecosystems via runoff of excess nutrients into the surrounding environment and waterways. Measured in grams of phosphate equivalents per calorie and per kilogram, animal foods exceed the majority of plant foods and far exceed all staple plant foods in their uh, eutrophying emissions. In the United States, farm animals are the greatest contributor of gaseous ammonia emissions, uh, 80% of the 15,900 annual human deaths directly resulting from food-related air pollution are attributed to animal-based foods. Um, looking at soy, only 20% of its global use is directly for human food. Over 30% is fed to chickens and other poultry, 20% to pigs, 6% uh, for aqu aquaculture, and 2% for beef and dairy production. Looking at corn production in the U.S., the majority is fed to animals. Um, for corn-fed animals, the efficiency of converting grain to meat and dairy calories ranges from 3 to 40 percent, so at best that's a 60 percent loss in calories to the animal's excretions, basically. Um, all while animal products make up 27 percent of total calories consumed by Americans. Looking at crop deaths from plant agriculture, it's estimated that there are 7.3 billion animal deaths per year, which include mouse deaths, uh, birds killed by pesticides, fish killed by fertilizer runoff, and lizards and amphibians killed by uh, eating pesticide-contaminated insects. This compared to the 9.5 billion land animals directly killed for food in the U.S. each year. When you add marine animals, that number becomes 55 billion animals directly killed for human consumption versus the 7.3 billion animal number um, for the casualties from plant agriculture. Um, and with that, I yield. Okay. Appreciate the opening statement felt like a teacher where you're like, okay, now who wants to read the next paragraph? All right. All right. Uh, Mr. Farms, you're up. You have seven minutes on the clock. Go ahead. Okay. Um, first of all, it's, it's ironic to be debate, debating vegans on whether animal agriculture or crop agriculture is more harmful. Um, the whole premise of being a vegan um, is to do the least amount of harm possible. And um, you can see that vegans do not really like to focus on the animal deaths that are associated with the crop agriculture that brings the vegan menu to the market. Um, when you talk about crop agriculture, <clears throat> you're talking about Oranges, apples, pears, cucumbers, avocados, celery, spinach, um, green beans, peas. The list just goes on and on and on. Um, livestock do not eat any of those. However, the two crops that are associated with animal feed are corn and soybean. Um, when you look at soybean, for instance, uh, it is certainly, uh, they listed a lot of the uh, destruction and harm that's, that soybean uh, crops are responsible for, including the uh, destructive tillage, the pesticides, the um, synthetic nitrogen, the fine, fo the uh, mined phosphorus, phosphorus, the mined potassium, these are all very uh, destructive practices, uh, as well as all of the uh, the runoff, the the uh, fertilizer runoff, the pesticide runoff, 
all of the animals of the animal animals are actually being driven into extinction by uh, crop agriculture, primary the corn and soybean industries. Um, you did hear how uh, like 20% of only 20% of the soybean crop is going to humans. Um, it's it's actually more than 20%. It's about 27% because about 7% of the soybeans are grown specifically for human consumption. It goes uh, directly to the humans as whole so soybeans. But um, any anyone that invests in commodities futures has heard of the soybean crush spread. And this is a uh, investment strategy that investors use to hedge their uh, bets on soybean investments. And it's based on the fact that uh, every year, about 90% of the world's soybeans are processed. They're crushed to squeeze out the oil. Uh, soybeans are an oil seed. In fact, they provide 61% of the world's uh, seed oils. And so 90% of the world's soybeans are actually processed to extract the oil. And humans consume 100% of that oil, either as cooking oil, as an ingredient in ultra-processed junk food, or as biofuel, uh, biodiesel. So um, when they say 20% of the soybeans are going to human consumption, this is how intellectually dishonest that statement actually is. It's, it's kind of like this, when you peel a pecan, and you remove the meat of the pecan and put it on one side and you put the shell on the other and you weigh the two, the shell is gonna weigh about 60% of the total pecan and the pecan uh, nut meat is going to weigh about 40% of the total pecan. Now, if you feed that nut meat to people and you feed, you grind up the shell of the pecan and feed it to animals, then you turn around and claim that 60 or 40, only 40% 40 of the pecans are going to feed humans. Do you see how that's not actually honest? You're not actually feeding 40% of the pecans to the humans because you've processed the pecan. You re, you've removed the shell, the part that's inedible to humans, and you've set aside the part that is an asset for human consumption. And so if you're processing 100% of the pecans to remove the shell and you're only eating the meat, then you can't blame the animals that you're feeding the shell to for your pecan crop. Now, a similar situation is happening with corn. Although with corn, a greater percentage of the corn is actually grown for the livestock. About 36% every year of the world's corn is grown to feed livestock. 36%. The other 74% uh, is going to the production of corn on the cob, corn in the can, the production of high fructose corn syrup, the production of ethanol, the production of uh, alcoholic beverages. And these processes that produce ethanol, high fructose corn syrup, alcoholic breath, uh, beverages, they create industrial waste and it's called spent grains, also known as distiller's grains. This is the less leftover fibrous waste after some product has been created for, solely for human consumption because humans consume alcoholic beverages. They consume biodiesel and ethanol. They consume high fructose corn syrup and they consume soybean oil. And so 86% According to the UN's FAO, 86% of all livestock feed is actually inedible industrial waste left over from uh, processing that is uh, processing the corn and the soybean, creating some product that's destined solely for human consumption, and then the leftover garbage, rather than being piled up and burned, is being fed to animals. Myself, I'm a I'm a regenerate I'm, I'm a regenerative rotational grazing uh, grazier, 
So I don't actually feed my animals uh, these feeds. I have a pasture that I keep stockpiled for the winter and I piece that out to my animals during the winter and I can get them all the way through the winter uh, grazing that stockpiled grass. I don't require any, any of that feed. However, uh, like I just explained clearly, the most of the feed, 86% of the feed has not actually been grown specifically for livestock. It's actually been grown uh, to be processed so that products can be extracted from it and consumed specifically and solely by human beings. And with that, I'll yield. Whew. That was right at the 10 second marker. Good job. <laughs> Don't always get right to the edge of the line like that.